Well, I reckon that this is a perfect time to do 73 questions Hi. with Adele. I have to pinch myself that this is actually happening right now. How are you? I'm doing so much better now that I'm with you. Me too. I'm so excited. I know. I think we've been trying to do this for a long time. Six, seven years. Six, Here we go. Six, seven years. Let's get into it. Okay. How is Adele doing these days? I'm great. I'm really great. I'm excited. I'm about to put my new album out. And I'd assume that that's the number one thing you're most excited about in life right it now. It is, and that's why you're here. That is the reason I'm here, and it's so good to see you in hot and sunny Los Angeles. It is. Typical Brit wearing a tracksuit in this, like, 90-degree weather. <laughs> it's okay. You look great. Thank you. And how has Los Angeles and the States been treating you these days? Great. I've, I've loved being here. I'm very calm. The past year has been challenging. It has. Has there been one thing you've learned during this time? Just how much of a homebody I am. and I probably would never leave my house if I didn't need to. Mm. And I ask this question on behalf of fans everywhere. Okay. When are we going to see you next live or in concert on tour? As soon as possible. I'm, I'm ready to go, really. It's just up to COVID. So yeah. just keep on wearing your mask and don't be spreading that delta. And who knows? Let me help you with that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Ooh. I think we should uh, dive into your childhood. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> Let's do it. How did you realize that you had a great voice? I guess because I got signed. My favorites are like brilliant, so I don't really rate myself as a singer. Is your mom musical? She's like, yeah, she's a, she's a fan of music, so yeah. And you did a Camden crawl and you toured small London pubs. I did. What was your favorite venue to play when you first started gigging? Probably Madam Jojo's. I played there a few times, plus all my friends used to play there as well. Do you think you still remember the Hot Spurs chant? Oh, yes. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. And the Spurs go marching on. The crowd goes wild. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Were you nervous to put your music up on MySpace way back then? I actually didn't do that. That was my friend Linden. So no, I wasn't. Oh, you weren't? Yeah. And do you remember who any of your top eight friends were? I mean, that's like 12, 13 years ago. Um, <laughs> Come on. Definitely Jack Pinate. Yeah. Definitely Jamie T. Kid Harpoon. Let me grab that for you. Thank you. Definitely Laura Marling. Definitely Lily Allen, because she was the queen of MySpace at the time. Probably a bit of Scroobius Pip. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the Maccabees? That's, yeah. How many is that, like six? I'm not entirely sure. Have you ever considered a different stage name all this time? No, because my surname is so boring. It's Adkins. Okay, this is a beautiful, beautiful home. It's so cozy. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I tried to make it feel like a little English countryside. Yeah, I feel like I'm there. And what's been the most surprising aspect of living as a Brit in America? That my sarcastic humor doesn't actually travel. <laughs> What's an unexpected similarity between London and Los Angeles? Tea and coffee culture. What do Americans do that's different than Brits? You have your own funky language for things. Like, this is actually coriander, mm -hmm. not cilantro. Mm -hmm. And your eggplants are actually aubergines. Your movie theaters we call cinemas. Your candy we call sweets. Right. Kind of the list is kind of endless, really. There's a lot to keep track of. There is. So, okay, so am I looking at a typical grocery run from Adele? Yes and no. This looks super duper healthy because I'm making a vegetable soup tonight. But normally, you know, there's some cereal, some sugar cereal for my son and mm. stringy cheese he loves <laughs> and milkshakes and things like that. But kind of, yeah, you know, I watch, I watch what I put into my body these days. What do you miss more, Tesco or Sainsbury's? Well, I'd say Tesco simply because that was the only supermarket that was in my neighborhood when I was growing up. But actually, it's Marks and Spencer. All right, we're going to go back in time. You're making your first album. OK. 19. What surprised you about professionally recording music back then? I think how much I really enjoyed being in a studio environment, actually. Mm. Yeah. And who in the crowd made you most nervous during your first TV appearance? Was it your mom or Sir Paul McCartney? Without a doubt, it was Sir Paul McCartney. Okay. And um, at the end of the show that I did my first ever singing performance on, he sang Hey Jude. So it was incredible. What a moment. And then there was SNL. There was. What was the scariest thing about performing live on SNL? Live TV in America in general, but also I knew that a few extra people were tuning in because of Sarah Palin. So I definitely yeah. shot myself. Yep, that happened. <laughs> And you became a star. And how did you handle being recognized in public? Um, I don't love it, but ever since 21 sort of came out, really, I just, my hair gets bigger, my makeup gets thicker, and my dresses get bigger so that I practically look a, a bald eagle or something like that in day-to-day -day life. Do you mind if I take a gander at your book? Oh, my goodness, please do. There's oh, some great. good ones up there. OK. Uh, what's the best movie that you've watched recently? Probably Minari. And uh, do you think it's true that you can learn a lot about a person based on the books that they keep? 
Well, I would say that, but I don't know that many people that have real books in their house anymore. They seem to have Kindles, or they just don't read at all, or on their phone, or something like that. So, right. I'd say back in the day, yeah. All right. Well, now we're uh, 21 years old. You're recording the second album, 21. Yes. What did your diaries throughout the songwriting process look like then? Drunk, chaotic, distressed, very, very sad. Um, yeah, along those lines. And what did you do with them after the album was completed? They are all hidden in a handbag somewhere in my wardrobe room in London. And I actually have no idea which one. So they could be missing for all I know. That's good bonus material. It is. Which recording would you say challenged you the most? Probably don't you remember, it was sort of my attempt at a country song. Um, it starts super duper tender and soft, which I'm not brilliant at. Mm. By the end I'm wailing, which is way more my comfort zone. But um, I'd say don't you remember. Yeah. And then there's your throat surgery. It was. I heard uh, John Mayer offer some guidance after this procedure. What did he share with you? He just, you know, he was just sort of very encouraging to stay silent and be patient. And the, actually my injury was a very common singer's injury, so not to worry too much about it. So yeah, he was great. He's such a sweetheart. I like him so much. How would you describe the difference in your voice pre and post procedure? It was definitely heading towards a Tom Waits sound that I had before my surgery, getting very, very husky. Um, and afterwards, it was a brand new voice. It was so clean and pure, yeah. Yeah. And would you ever release the alternate version of 21? No, because if I wanted to do that, I would have done it already. So. Fair point. Yes. Okay. So, fashion questions. Okay. Heels or slides? Hate slides. It's got to be heels. Bare feet or heels on stage? Barefoot, so I don't fall over. And what's your most iconic style moment? Well, I would say probably my Armani moment in 2012 at the Grammys. Oh. And I was pregnant, so I just love that dress. Who's your fashion icon? Kate Blanchett. Who always gets it right on the red carpet? Kate Blanchett. Okay. And what do you never leave the house without wearing? Earrings. Who makes your favorite eyeliner? Pat McGrath. And what fashion advice can you offer me right now? Um, just keep on doing what you're doing. Comfort over style. Thank you. I really That's what do. I do too. I appreciate that. And when you're making your third album, 25, you said that making this album was the hardest thing that you've ever done. It was. But what was the easiest song on the album to write? Definitely Remedy. I think it's probably because it's about my son. And what was the most valuable thing that you learned from producer Max Martin? All about the hooks. Uh, for anyone looking to write a killer pop song, what's the most important piece of advice to consider? It's all about the hooks. About the hooks, okay. And what was the biggest difference between working on 19, 21, and 25? Well, 19, I hadn't long been signed, so I only had like four songs, so I had to actually really write an album, it felt like. Uh, 21, I couldn't stop writing it. Mm. It was just pouring out of me, I was such a hot mess. And then 25, I just didn't have time to write, really, so I just had a newborn baby, so right. not much. Let's go outside. Okay, let's do it. It's lovely out here. Which venue was most intimidating or terrifying to perform in? Um, after you. I would say the ANZ Stadium in Sydney. It was something silly like 100,000 people. Oh, this is beautiful. This oh, is this so is very here. English out here. <laughs> it feels like it, yeah. It's also very Grey Gardens. Yeah. Yes. What was your favorite city to play in? Always London. Yeah. Have you found any cures for stage fright? Sadly not. No? No, none whatsoever. Ah, oh, what's the strangest thing you've seen someone do at one of your shows? A middle-aged woman drink too much, pass out, then piss herself while she got carried out. <laughs> Vegas, obviously. Vegas, obviously. 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 Do you cry while singing any of your songs? I do to quite a few of my new ones, yeah. Oh, wow. What piece of advice would you give to your 19-year-old self? That your love life's gonna get a lot worse. Ooh. Truth. <laughs> Truth, yeah. Uh, how about any advice for anyone getting started in music? Well, the best advice I ever got was um, to keep your heart safe and your music dangerous. And mm -hmm. I live by that, so that would be my piece of advice too. That's good. How has becoming a mom changed your songwriting? Um, I just don't really have much time to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And what's the best advice your own mom gave you about parenting? To chill out and stop being so regimented with the routine. What's your happiest memory with your mom? Probably when she moved back in with me when I was 21. I was really falling apart and she lovingly put me back together. So sweet. And I would assume that she's your roommate on the road when you're on tour? No, because she's still my mother, so she still thinks that she can tell me what to do. So no, she just comes to the shows. It's always gonna be like that. <laughs> and why was it important for you to support victims of the Grenfell Tower fire? Just felt like I had to. It was right around the corner from where my house in London is. 
And it was, you know, it was overtook the UK. We couldn't believe that there was a building like that in the middle of central London that had burnt down. Um, and I just wanted to be a safe and consistent person for yeah. them, which I hope I was. What word would your friends use to describe you? Definitely loyal. And I heard you do a killer Al Pacino impression. Can you give me some of that? Yes, but it's, I think it's good. It's hoo-ha from his role as Wellington Sentence or uh, maybe it's tanked. yeah. Okay, now I thought we were gonna have some more fun besides Al Pacino impressions. Yes, always. I have a, a phone here with an app on it where okay. you can sing a little stuff into it and then you can change your voice into whatever you want. Fun. Okay, let's give it a go. Hello from the other side. Let's have a look. Okay, there's a lot of options. Let's start with yeah. helium. Helium? Like Alvin the Chipmunk. <laughs> Try tunnel, go. reverb. Hello from the other side. That sounds like I'm singing in a shower. I'm yep, up for that, that one. I'm up for that, that one. Sounds like a shower. Yeah, that's definitely me on the new album. Yeah. All right, now let's hear you drunk. Hello from <laughs> the other side. Please tell me the next album is like that. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's what the whole album sounds like. Thank you. Okay, now, would you be able to rank the top three favorite songs that you've ever created? What are they? I'm gonna mix them with what mine are and what the, what the fans are, I reckon. So I reckon Someone Like You would mm -hmm. be number one. Mm -hmm. I think there's a new song on um, the new album that would be my number second, or be my second one. And then When We Were Young. Right. I really love that song. I love singing it. It means a lot to me. Great selections. And can you do the same for Beyonce's top albums? You know, that could be controversial. Uh, the Hive might come and kill me. I'm, okay, my personal favorites. <laughs> my first one is Sasha Fierce, that sublime double album. The second one would be Lemonade. The third one is a bit of a toss up between two, but I'm gonna go with my gut and my heart, and I'm gonna say B-Day. You know she's gonna watch this. <laughs> <laughs> was breaking your Grammy in half for Beyonce easier or harder than you thought it would be? It was actually really easy. I was just so uncomfortable and nervous up on the stage trying to give that speech mm -hmm. right in front of her. Mm -hmm. I just sort of twisted off and fell off with my hand. It felt like fate. <laughs> now, on the internet, there is David Attenborough narrating your Hello Music video. Yes, there is. With his iconic voice. Yeah. Uh, was that totally surreal, watching it, that? It was incredible. It was live on radio. I don't even know if he knew that he was doing it. He just sort of had to watch the video and read the lyrics, or, you know, read his script and stuff like that. But yeah. he's like everything in the UK. Like, we love him so much. Um, and he's my mum's hero, so it was phenomenal, <laughs> yes. Do you read what people write about you on the internet? Very rarely. What's the most ridiculous rumor you've ever heard about yourself? I think all the crazy rumors about my love life, um, you know, since I've been single and stuff like that, they're just, none of it's true, so probably be those. In your career, do you think there was ever a time that you felt like you couldn't be yourself? No, I've been very, very lucky with that, and I know that, no, never. What's the proudest possession that you own? It's actually inside, oh. let's go in. Okay, let's see. In the meantime, yes. uh, how about some British this or that questions? Okay, Blur or Oasis? Blur. Noel or Liam? Definitely Liam, without a doubt. Prince William or Prince Harry? Prince Harry. Spicy. Spice Girls or the Beatles? I mean, that's a bit unfair, but I'm gonna go with Spice Girls. By the way, what's the most impressive thing about the Spice Girls? They really don't care. They really, really, really don't care about anything. And I can think just their brashness and stuff like that, I think. Okay, what do we have here? It's pretty amazing. All right. Celine Dion's gum. That's right. What's going on here? James Corden, who's a friend of mine, but also does carpool karaoke, which I did. Uh, he did it with her and knew how much a fan of, I, of her I was. And so he made her spit her gum into a piece of paper and he framed it for me. <laughs> and it's my proudest possession. <laughs> Three questions left before I get out of here, Adele. Okay. Well, the whole world is waiting. I'm gonna attempt to try to get you to spill some tea on Good the next album. All right. If 25 closed a trilogy, what is something new you'll explore for the first time your next album? Does anything ever really end? What one specific thing that's different in this album than every other album? It's definitely my most personal one yet, I think, yeah. And last question, question number 73. What's the new album's name? Well, let's keep going and maybe you'll find out. Uh... That's unconventional. This is a 73 question interview and- Oh, let's do it, it's so much fun. Sit down, let me come to you. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
I love the Skyfall theme. Oh, good. <laughs> How is recording this Bond theme different than recording your other stuff? Well, I was heavily pregnant, actually, when I did the vocal for Skyfall. So, and it's the only song that I recorded while I was pregnant with him. Mm -hmm. So my voice was a lot lower, and he also hated it when I was singing um, the high notes. He'd sort of kick around inside of me. Who would you bet is going to be the next James Bond? I mean, it's a tough one. There's been lots of, up, lots of different choices and stuff. But I would like Jonathan Major to be the next Bond, but I don't know if that's allowed, because he's American. Would you like some milk? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love that. Thank you. Um, but I think Idris Elba. And what song, not yours, have you sung the most in your life? My heart will go on. <laughs> and who would you love to cover one of your songs? Barbra Streisand. Now, I know you love Nicki Minaj. I do. Uh, if you were to collab on a track with Nicki Minaj, what would it be called? Mum Lee. There you go. Oh, thank you. And that was um, question 78, but now that we're having tea, I might as well stick around. Might as well. Okay, uh, question number 79. Uh, favorite restaurant in London? Kai's. I'll just keep going with the British questions. Oh, please do. Uh, favorite pub of all time? The Warmer Castle. Oh, that tea is good. What's a stereotype about the UK that's totally true? That it always rains. What about one that's completely false? I feel like everyone thinks that we've all met the Queen or we haven't. So yeah, we'll be there. Now we're at 82 questions with Adele. Having fun? Uh, yeah. Good, me too. I'll keep going. Uh, favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> what telly have you been binging these days? Oh, I noticed that. I have been binge watching on the telly mm. Ted Lasso. Mm. I think it's great. It's very mm. British as well. What might people not know about wearing your hair in a beehive? Well, if it's your own natural hair as a beehive, it gets a bit smelly. Yeah, well, best tip for putting on false eyelashes, I'm asking for a friend. Get someone else to do it for you. Mm -hmm. What decade of fashion is your favorite? Probably the 60s. What should everyone have in their wardrobe? A cozy jumper, aka sweater. Okay, we're at question 89 yeah. now. Biggest risk you've ever taken? Leaving my marriage. Hmm. Uh, what would you be doing if you were not a musical artist? I like to think I'd still be doing small little gigs in pubs and clubs on my guitar. Even though I'm sure no one will come and see me. Um, but I really wanted to be an English teacher before all this happened, really? so I'd like to think that I'd, I'd be doing that, yeah. Hmm. What are your favorite lyrics you've ever written? They're all on the new album. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Yes. Uh, who is your favorite lyricist? Leonard Cohen. Oh, love him. Me and too. who is your favorite composer? Hans Zimmer. Who's your dream duet partner? Chris Stapleton. Ooh. Uh, what's your most listened to album of 2020? You know, I, was, I went for comfort. I was listening to Show Some Emotion by Joan Armand Trading. It reminds me of home and reminds me of my mum. So I was mm. listening to that a lot. That's sweet. How many are we up to now? We are at 95 questions. Oh, I'll tell you. Mm. Great. Let's call it a day. We're, we're done. 95 questions. Wow. You can take it to you if you want. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. That'll give something for the fans to work out. See you in seven years. Thanks, Adele.